Hello, everyone. My name is Brandon Furtig with Minnesota Blockchain Initiative. This is the MN Blockchain Conversations podcast from the Quantum Lex studio at Quantum Lex Law Firm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. In this conversation here, I sit down with Chase Larson. Chase is the executive vice president and CLO of St. Cloud Financial Credit Union, and they are building a unique product, a first of its kind in their industry, crypto custody platform. And so we went from there. Chase, tell us all about it. Um, where does it lie as far as, is it like a Coinbase or more like a Trezor or a Ledger cold storage? Where does it lie in that continuum of options for holding crypto? Who holds the keys? How does this platform work? What's it been like working with regulators? Have they given you a hard time or have they been more hands off both statewide and nationally? Uh, Chase was forthright with all of these questions, explained what they're building, how they're building it, and plans for the future. It's a, it's a really great episode learning about the nuts and the bolts of building some infrastructure uh, in this industry from right here in Minnesota. So sit back, relax, and, and enjoy. You guys are doing something pretty cool up there at St. Cloud uh, Financial Credit Union. Yeah. Start uh, introducing yourself, and then we'll get right into it. Yeah, so uh, Chase Larson, I'm the EVP Chief Lending Officer for St. Cloud Financial Credit Union. Uh, been there two and a half years, uh, been in finance since 2008. And for me personally, started my uh, foray into digital assets in early 2016. Okay. Um, really with the launch of, uh, of, of Ethereum, uh, about a year after the launch of Ethereum. So that makes you an OG officially. Uh, sure. Yeah. 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 In this space, a few yeah. years old as an OG, I think. Yeah. Um, well, what... Talk, like just introduce the, the 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 project that you guys are working on up there. Yeah, so um, at Saint Cloud Financial, we started. Really, it's a culmination of uh, for our CEO Jed Meyer, uh, many years in the making. Uh, I would say officially as an organization, we set out uh, actually with the hire of myself in late 2021. Uh, Jed went to our board earlier that year and said, I don't know what our strategy is going to be or what it looks like, but I know we need to get involved. Uh, and so we put our board, I wasn't with the organization at the time or the credit union. Uh, Jed put our board as well as our executive uh, team through a eight hour and then a four hour training uh, with our partner DeLand, our, our now partner DeLand Cuso. Um, and Jed went to our board and said, hey, we need to hire somebody that understands the space. What, um, what space? Uh, sorry, digital asset and blockchain space. Um, and so we had a chief lending officer position open. I had applied uh, and with my background in digital assets, I think, I don't even think I got home from the interview and Jed called me and I remember telling my brother like, something's goofy here, right? I got to call that quick, um, accepted and the rest is history. Were you suspicious? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Like, oh, okay, uh, that was too easy. Yeah, a little bit. I didn't know I was a unicorn to some degree uh, uh -huh. at the time uh, with my history in, in the crypto or digital assets. And are, were you from the area or did you yeah. move there? Nope, from St. Cloud, born and raised. Um, and St. Cloud is how big? Uh, 60,000 people. The uh, whole area has a few other towns around it, right? So yeah. is it a little bit like... Yeah, like I think the MSA is 200,000 or 190,000 oh, okay. between uh, Sartell, Sock Rapids, Wait Park, and St. Cloud. Um, but still like a mid-size yeah. metropolitan area. Yeah. Not, not a small town, but not a big city. No. And I'm guessing in his mind, he's like, well, we're not going to get too many guys like him coming through here. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I always joke we're a small town that that got big, right? Because St. Cloud is still a small town, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we really at the time, so this would have been Q1, uh, Q4 of 21, Q1 of 22. Uh, Just we, when things tanked. Yeah. Just well, as things were tanking. Pretty much, yeah. Perfect time for builders. Perfect time for builders. Mm -hmm. um, then obviously fast forward, FTX collapse, but um, at the time we had went out and really identified, we did a member survey and, and just to give you a little bit of uh, the picture, right? So we're 25,000 approximately uh, members. We're a okay. member owned financial cooperative. We're a credit union, state chartered. Uh, our average age of our membership is like 50. Yep. And so if you think about that and, and from a narrative perspective, um, uh, we did a member survey in 20, uh, would have been January of 22. And we had, I think approximately 22% of our respondents said they're either in crypto, plan to be in crypto or are interested. 
And then fast forward, we did that same survey two months after the FTX collapse, or three months rather, and we had a 17% uh, positive response. So average response of about 20% either are in it, want to be in it, or are interested. And if you look, I think it's 20% globally or in the United States from an adoption percentage. Okay. And so we kind of we kind of align there. It was interesting for me, just given the average age of our member, or our client, our yeah. customer, right? Uh, and so we set out a, a four phase approach um, uh, and we'll, we'll get later on, I'll tell you from a product standpoint, we also have a four phase approach, but from our strategy, it was listen to our members, uh, education second, uh, both our employees as well as our members, safe storage of digital assets and then transactions at some point. And what's the name of your CEO? Uh, Jed Meyer. And what, what made him so convicted that this is the path forward? Even after those surveys, only 20% yeah. of your of your clients were interested in this, but you said, we're, we're proceeding anyway, this is the future. Yeah, I think it aligns with our ethos. Uh, one, with Jed as a leader, but two, our organization, we've always, uh, you look at our history, even outside of digital assets, uh, very visionary, always out ahead of the market. And sometimes, you know, uh, maybe not a home run, but I think as an organization and as our CEO, he's done a really good job of identifying things doing the work before you have to, right? You create opportunities, it doesn't mean you have to walk through the door. And so uh, in Jed's words, he would say that in 2000, I think it was 2010 or 2011, he was an executive for another FI uh, and the CEO at the time said, What's hey, FI? Uh, sorry, CEO for another financial. Uh, and his boss at the time said, hey, go figure out what this Bitcoin thing is. And the one wow, th back then. Yes. Uh, and the one thing Jed, uh, in his words, would say is I knew I didn't know enough. And I knew that I needed to just continue to pay attention. Fast forward to, you know, 2020, 2021. If you think about um, really, right, that says... And again, I suppose it was uh, leading up to the collapse of FTX, but you were seeing ads on TV about mm -hmm. crypto. It was really starting, in my opinion, starting to become more mainstream from a, um, it just, it, it was less about, um, less about what I would call the OGs talking about it or the developers, builders, or this, mm -hmm. this tight knit community. And it was starting to be brothers, sisters, moms, and dads. Um, and so we sat down and mapped out a strategy uh, that I shared with you. We had met with NIDIG uh, at the time. Uh, NIDIG is an FI containerized solution okay. where the easiest way I can put it is they offer a, um, an integration into a credit union or bank's uh, environment through an API in their online banking. And so you log into your online banking and it allows you to buy and sell, but it all you're doing when you hit buy is locking the price in, they're ACHing the money out. Yeah. And then that third party holds the assets. Yeah. What I didn't like about it is in a newer space to our organization, if a member said, Hey, I wanna move my assets to a cold storage or I wanna I'm gonna close my account, I wanna go over here. At the time, NIDIG's only um, answer to that was for sale. So the member would have to convert to cash. They didn't allow ins and outs of mm -hmm. the asset. Mm -hmm. I just didn't like that for our members, mm -hmm. right? I, forcing a sale, lack of control. I, I just, and it's commingled. Their solution at the time is one account for the financial institution. All member assets go into one account. And it just, it, it seemed like a vendor approach versus being uh, financial institution centric. Um, I'm not keyed into the, to the, financial or to the, to the credit union or the banking world. Is this, um, are these conversations happening in, in, in credit unions or bank, banks of your size across the country or are you guys really out ahead of the I pack would with this? say um, they're starting to happen more so, but I would say we've been leading edge with this uh, for the last two years for sure. As the market, especially in the last three months, as you see mm -hmm. uh, the Black Rocks and, and the narrative yeah. change and really the narrative sh shifted and in the normalization, you're now seeing a rush of uh, financial institutions reaching out to us on LinkedIn, uh, mm. reaching out to our partner, Deland. <clears throat> Uh, whereas two years ago, I would talk on a podcast and I felt like maybe one out of 50 actually got it. The other 49, I think, thought we were talking about Furbies or, you know what I mean? They just, they didn't sink in. Um, and you still obviously have that. But I would say the conversations are starting to happen. We're definitely out ahead of it for sure. The industry tended to see it as a, 
a fad, huh? Yeah, yeah. Not uh, not a surprise. Not as the next evolution of finance. Right. Right. Yep. yep. And if you think about it, it's it's a metric or it's a unit of accounting. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think where people get hung up, not only in financial institutions, but in general, is currency, cryptocurrency. Most people don't understand it's currency of the underlying network. And then you have Bitcoin, which is obviously store of value and there's investment use cases. But I think in a lot of people's minds that I've talked to, the first thing is, well, are you telling me it's going to replace the dollar? It's like, well, I'm not saying Bitcoin's not going to, but I'm also not saying it's going to. It's a store of value. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that hangs everybody up, is, is in my opinion, where a lot of people get hung up. Digital gold doesn't cut it for them? No, no. Or, or well, I don't understand how it has value. Well, look at the dollar. <laughs> the dollar's not backed oh. by anything. It has value right. because we say it does. Right, right. Yeah, that's what I see as getting a lot of hang up online on yeah. Twitter or wherever is that it's not backed by anything. Right. Thing. Yeah. Right. It's got a massive network, though, that has immense value. You and I both know that. Yeah, it, it's it's diamonds or you know other things like that. It's art, right? Yeah, like the power of of a collective belief. Yeah, yeah. And in the, in the case of Bitcoin, it's not just a collective belief, like a crypto punk. It's utility, right? And 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 it's and it's work, like yes. the proof of work. Yeah. So there's a lot behind it on top of the you know the whole movement right popular movement yeah well and and the security alone right decentralized servers yeah. storing uh record uh that's to me that's uh, that's more powerful yeah. than most uh networks or investments you could make um so what what is your product yeah so we have uh trademarked uh cu digital asset vault okay uh so capital c capital u cu digital asset vault and um, the most simplistic way I can say it is, um, so today there's the NYDIG offerings of the world. Or, NYDIG, you've said that a few times. Yeah, so that's, that's just a company. So it's a, okay. it's a vendor yep. type relationship, right? You're, uh, and, and again, nothing against NYDIG, but it's the one that's most prevalent, mm-hmm. uh, where you're signing up with a vendor and they're offering through an API or an integration into a organization's online banking platform, access to uh, buy, sell, and hold assets. Digital assets. Yes, digital assets, uh, primarily Bitcoin and Ethereum. So you're, outsource, you're outsourcing to this third party. Correct. The custody of the crypto, and you're saying, let's just build it in-house. Yep, so our offering, CU Digital Asset Vault, is a core-centric vault. Um, what does that mean? It, it's not a. Uh, it's not through an API. It's, yep. okay. The vault is actually built into our our banking core, just like our checking accounts are, just like our savings accounts are, just like our loans are. It's another product uh, built on the front end of our system that we use for if you have a checking account with us, if you get a loan with mm-hmm. us. Okay. And what happens is, um, I think the the magic is really in the security. Um, so you and I know um, you have your wallet, hot wallets, or uh, mm-hmm. you know held with a company, and then you have your cold storage wallets like a Ledger Nano. Okay. Yep. Uh, for me, I had a crypto consulting company that uh, I, w- I winded down in 2021 uh, that I launched in 18, and the biggest thing that I saw with people of all age groups was. Uh, they'd come to my four hour, well, four to eight hour training that I'd have. Mm. Uh, and at the peak, I think I had 60 clients. Um, and I would tell everybody, it's my recommendation that you go out and buy a Ledger Nano S or some sort of cold storage wallet for security. And within a week, a week and a half, I'd get a phone call. Hey, can you help me use this Ledger? Right. It's yeah. it's very uh, foreign to mm-hmm. most people. Mm-hmm. And they're afraid that they're going to mess up. Uh, they're going to send it to the wrong place. They yeah. just don't. They don't get it. So our core centric vault, uh, you log on. So you put in your credentials, and it's going to say send or receive digital assets. So if I sent two Bitcoin to my vault that's housed in our core, behind the scenes, it's going to bifurcate the private key. We hold a portion of the private key. A portion of the the other portion of the private key is held held with either Amazon or Microsoft. 
264-bit encrypted. And so from a security and an ease of use perspective, and then we also don't recognize the assets on our balance sheet, right? So think of it like a digital safety deposit box. That's really mm-hmm. what it is. We're not rehypothecating or leveraging our members' assets. Mm-hmm. Uh, each uh, member, so if we had 100 vaults, there's or 100 uh, members using the vault, there's 100 uh, digital asset vaults. We're not commingling uh, member assets. How, who did you bring in to architect this? Yeah, so Deland, QSO. Uh, they've been around since 2011. They're a, a tech company that focuses on um, like core conversions, digital strategy. They're they're a. I think they have uh, 12 programmers and coders. They helped us build the vault. And they knew. They knew uh, crypto. Correct. Yeah, their uh, CIO. Uh, uh, it's been in the crypto space since 2010, I believe, 2010 or 11. Um, very, very smart individuals. Um, Are they in St. Cloud too? No, they're they're actually um, domiciled in Connecticut, and I mm-hmm. believe their CIO is in Colorado. Okay. Uh, we've had a relationship with them well before. Uh, the digital asset vault, but they are the the brains behind building out the vault with us. Okay, got it. Yep. Um, I mean, that must have taken a real massive investment from the credit union standpoint. Time uh, was the biggest investment, but yeah, there was there was some dollars there. Did the board uh, push back? No. Like, hey, come on, we're gonna dump this much money into this no pet rock or whatever. No, right. <laughs> they wanted well, to so disparage su- it as surprisingly. Um, We actually, uh, the first time I would say the strategy was approved was February of 2022. I'd been with the credit union six months and we're we're out for our strategic planning session. And a lot of our board members are retired. They've been, uh, Mm -hmm. one of our board members been with us 35 years. So I was expecting a lot of pushback. Uh, They've embraced it since day one. I, I would say they maybe didn't understand it at first as much, right? So did you go up there and give a talk to them to yes. like lay out how this yep. is, this is going to work? Correct. You're like, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Here's what. Do you here's have a stick why. And you're pointing at the chart. Yeah. Or we the there. PowerPoint. Oh, Literally, sorry. That's what happened. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. Sorry. I just want to get this human yeah. moment, yes. you know, in mind here. And then these people with white and gray hair or no hair are like. Hmm. You know, they, but they weren't a tough crowd, huh? No, they weren't a tough crowd. And I think a lot of it has to do with um, Jed. Our, he's been our CEO for 10 years, has mm-hmm. built a very good relationship with our board. Mm-hmm. Um, it, maybe in the back of their mind, they were thinking, yeah, we'll see how far this goes. Right. Um, and at the time, it was just right. It was just approving us to move forward and really start beta testing. So today it's not live, right? We're going to launch it outward to our membership June of this year, maybe May, but I'd say June is when it'll go live. We've been beta testing it since July of 22. Okay. Uh, or user acceptance testing it on the uh, test net, Bitcoin and Ethereum test net. Uh, initially, the um, assets that a member will be able to store as of today are Bitcoin, Ethereum and USD. T. And is it sort of like a, a in-house Coinbase where, you know, you, you log on to this platform and you yeah. buy your, and once they make a purchase. Well, sorry, no, no buying and selling. So oh. this is just a storage. Think, ah, of, think okay. of it like a ledger. It's, it's a cross between Got the it. ease of using Coinbase and similar security to a ledger nano S is how I would describe it. And uh, today we're just starting with vaulting or just starting with storage. Um, just more so from a regulatory standpoint, and I can walk you through, I mean, we've been working hand in hand with um, the uh, uh, board of the NCUA. Uh, so we started meeting What's with- that? Um, yeah, so credit unions are regulated okay. by the NCUA. Uh, National Credit Union Association or yes, something? Yes, sorry. Okay. Yep, National Credit Union Association. Yeah. There's a board of three individuals. Each individual has a region, Eastern, Western, Central. Uh huh. And then there's a, a chairman of the board, a vice chairman, and then just a board member or member. Um, we started working hand in hand with the vice chairman of the NCUA, Kyle Houtman, in October of 22. Mm-hmm. Uh, and really trying to um, his comment to me at the time was, uh, or to Jed and I at the time was, there's nothing, there's no guidance from the NCUA saying you can't 
uh, custody digital assets in your vault. And our thought was, yeah, but given given what it is and that it's so new and you watch some of the noise on the OCC and the bank side, uh, really trying to get a, a head nod before we launch this out. Okay. Um, in a lot of situations, you see banks and credit unions, they'll go out and do something, right? And, and, and then it ends up that the regulator says, hey, we're not okay with this. Mm-hmm. And you end up in court and then through a long court battle yeah. and a bunch of time, then regulation is developed. Our mm-hmm. thought was trying to walk hand in hand with the regulators. Right on. Um, and so that's been a lot of our work is the NCUA board, as well as the state commerce department, as well as our attorneys to really try laying some ground groundwork before we launch this out. The Minnesota Commerce Department Correct. of Commerce? Yes. How have they responded? Um, I would say they've punted a little bit. Okay. Um, they've been great partners of ours. I can't say anything otherwise, but I think the last meeting we had with them was in um, November of 23. And, um, uh, you know, a prior meeting we had in June of 23, one of the uh, lead credit union examiners uh, at the uh, state commerce department had recommended we go out and get a uh, letter of opinion from our attorney regarding custody. We did that. And I think their follow up to us this fall was, yeah, we're not sure uh, if if you're able to do this yet. And I really. Um, I understand, right? I, I think Jed, my thought and Jed's thought was, let's let's give it a few months. I think the narrative is going to change if the ETF mm-hmm. approval happens. And mm-hmm. you're already starting mm-hmm. to see that, right? We've yeah. seen the accounting regulations change on Q4. I think the narrative in the U.S. has changed. And so we'll see over the next few months if... That sounds very Minnesotan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, what, which is what makes your, your work so, so exciting. Absolutely. Right? Because in a state that's pretty conservative, uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff, yep. um, you know, here you are in St. Cloud at this institution. I don't know, is that a cultural thing in St. Cloud? Or is there a, a, a bit more shoot from the hip or chan- risk taking up there? I would say no. Okay. Um, I would say most people are afraid of their shadows, frankly. Um, <laughs> but I think there are, like anything, right, there are leaders that are willing to take calculated risks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the end of the day, right, we, we haven't done anything at this point. We haven't launched it yet. It's really been, again, trying to do it in partnership with the regulators. But it's and it, but it's looking to launch this summer. Yes. And um, we got a little bit of work to do on the regulatory side. But, yeah, that's our goal is to launch it in June. Is there a, a screenshot or something you could share? Uh, there is. Um, yeah, give me one sec. Um so from a member from a member standpoint, I think the the unique thing about our vault or the thing that and this uh, is it. Yes, this is the yes. Okay. So this is uh, it's uh, the under underlying technology is Code Engine built by our partner Deland Q. So um, uh, they 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 have programmed and built out our digital asset vault. Um, again, it's core centric. Uh, so it's not through an API. It's yeah. not logging in with the third party. On the left uh, side of the screen, you're going to see what it looks like either from a computer or from the member's phone. They're going to be able to hit receive, send, or history for their digital asset. On the right side of the screen, you see what our tellers would see. Oh. Um, the assets are denominated in digital assets because of regulation. So initially, they will not be ne- denominated in digital dollars, right? So. Mm-hmm. If I have one Bitcoin, uh, it's going to show on the uh, FI or on the credit union side, it's going to show that Chase has one Bitcoin. It won't show a value of 53 or 54,000. Again, as the regulation changes, we'll change how it's denominated within our core or within our banking platform. Um, And then I think the the other really unique uh, thing here is although we store a portion uh, or half of the member's private key. It's 264-bit encrypted. Nobody can actually visually see it. So a teller logs into Chase's account who has the digital asset vault, and if Chase is like, hey, I need to know what, what your portion of my private key is, the teller has no access. There is no access. It's 264-bit encrypted. It'll. It's hard to see on the screen, but in the top right corner of the right photo, it's a bunch of hash marks. Mm. Um, 
And so, um, okay. In this action, I'm sorry, this shows it on the screen because it was a test account, but it'll be, mm -hmm. it'll be a bunch of asterisks. You won't be able to see the yeah. uh, private key. Okay. Um, and then uh, just, I, just I want to back up for one sec. So we're starting with vaulting. Mm -hmm. um, phase two, which is already, uh, we could release it. It's already operational. Is transactions. So Chase walks into the Chase walks into the credit union, and says, "Brandon, I want to buy one Bitcoin, and let's say Bitcoin's fifty thousand. I will do a teller transaction that says debit fifty thousand from savings, buy one Bitcoin. It'll take the funds." Uh, move the funds into a GL out to uh, the network, buy Bitcoin, bring Bitcoin back in and right into my vault. And so we never have to hold, most institutions have to hold a purse of the digital assets they're buying mm -hmm. and selling. Mm -hmm. Ours is directly connected through a Bitcoin node where it'll do the transaction simultaneously, send it out, buy it on the open network, bring it back in and deposit it into my vault in less than 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So that's phase two. Phase three will be recognizing it on our balance sheet when the regulation gets there. And then phase uh, phase four would be you mean lending. the credit union will have crypto being as able an to, asset that they... Yeah, so being able to recognize if we have a hundred million dollars in digital assets in member vaults. It'll be able to recognize it on our balance sheet like we do customer deposits once the regulation catches up. All right. And then at some point lending uh, against digital assets. Okay. Leveraging those assets. Uh, and again, that could be two years, that could be five years, but uh, we are already to the point of phase three in our beta testing environment, but it'll regulation has to catch up. So we're yeah. just starting with vaulting because if I look at the horrific events of FTX and the moms, dads, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles that lost money because of fraud, uh, to me, I don't want that to happen to our members. Yeah. Um, it'll be nominal, uh, nominal fee structure for something, right? This is not about uh, making piles of money. It's about providing a safe storage. And I think it'll bring new members into our credit union from a, a product standpoint, right? Um, mm. I, I, I'm excited for the day we flip this thing live, uh, just with the, the number of people in our community that have heard me talk, yeah. the, you know, the 60 year old person to the 25 year old person that'll send me a message on social media. Hey, let me know when that vault's ready. I'm sick of using a ledger and NOS. It freaks me out. Right. And at the end of the day, I would never sit here and tell somebody that there is any there is no solution that's better than cold storage. Right. There just isn't. But for the person that wants a little more security mm -hmm. than storing it in an FTX or a Coinbase or something like that uh, and not have to deal with a cold storage device, I think this is a great solution in the middle. Why is your solution better than Coinbase? Um, I think uh, two, two prongs, well, three. Number one, we're not bifurcating, we're not leveraging, uh, we're not commingling assets. Uh, they are? Uh, I, don't, I don't know that they're not, I guess is my point. Uh -huh. um, number two, um, have you ever had to call Coinbase and get customer service? Good luck. Number three, I think most people want to work with a local trusted partner. Mm -hmm. um, and don't get me wrong, yeah. I like I like the Winklevoss twins with Gemini. I've never had a bad experience there. Um, but if I could pick somebody locally that I trust in my community, that's reinvesting the profits in my community, that's supporting yeah. the baseball field where Johnny plays at, yeah. I'd rather do it with the local person. Right on. Okay. So. Is. Can I ask a question? Okay. So how, how does it differ from, from, from BlockFi? Yeah. Clearly you're not taking, you're not getting yield for people who are Correct. putting their assets on Correct. In, in the vault. The vault is yours. Correct. So, so on that, there's no expectation of yield. Correct. You're lending based on, it's a collateral lend essentially, right? Yeah, it's but. Not, heretofore have not, has not necessarily happened. This correct. Is groundbreaking stuff. I'm loving everything. Here. Correct. So yeah. uh, today there will be no lending against. Yeah. We're not assets are in their vault. It's Fair it's no yeah. different than the gold they put in their safety deposit yeah. box. Yeah. We're providing a secure storage, digital storage solution for people to store assets. Mm -hmm. When we get to the point of lending uh, or phase 
four on our roadmap, it would be Chase has a hundred thousand in Bitcoin and wants to leverage, and and I want to do a twenty five thousand dollar loan against my own assets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that'll be our lending solution, the ability right. to leverage it, right? And uh, you know, Michael Saylor, for example, uh, personal whatever aside, he said. You know, uh, if you ever sell your Bitcoin, that's just uh, financially not a smart decision. If I need money, I'm going to borrow against my Bitcoin, right? Right. Borrow against an asset that over time continues to appreciate is finite, et cetera. And so I think as as we as we look at the progression over the next five years and you think about the liquidity crisis in the banking system, uh, the money that was borrowed out the end of Q1 last year to banks, almost to the tune of four trillion dollars through the uh, um, bank term funding program and you look at the open banking regulation that or the bill that's come up i see a future where credit unions and banks are really just a trusted network where i maybe i'm borrowing or leveraging my my digital assets for brandon and you're doing peer-to-peer lending and the credit union is just a connector that provides the infrastructure and it's more in the members hands on the members time and we're getting a small percentage I think that's the way it's heading. And I could be wrong, uh, we'll see. The purchasing aspect is, it will all be done within the bank? Yes. The phase two or three? Yes, yep. um, so that the so, so that means the individual could, it's not gonna be like Coinbase where you can just buy and sell on your own online. You have to go to the bank to do it? No, they can do it on their app. Oh, okay. I, I just gave you the scenario where Chase walks in the door. So when we get to, transactions or the ability to buy and sell, mm-hmm. you'll actually be able to do it from the same platform as our vault. So it'll be okay. buy, sell instead of receive, send, right? Um, the other thing that's unique is um, those of us that have been in the space for a while know that if you put in the wrong public address and you hit send, it's gone, right? Mm-hmm. There's no maybe white hat hacker and you know bounty there, maybe you can get it back. More times than not though, it's gone. And so initially we'll have a 24 hour hold where when the member sends, mm-hmm. s- send assets to their Coinbase account, it's gonna send them an email. Hey, we see you wanting to send X amount, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. I think the other unique thing with our vault is uh, part of our second release will have the ability to monitor uh, the inflows and outflows. Because another thing that we're seeing impact financial institutions is think about the amount of money being held outside of local communities right now on like me on my ledger, right? Um, and so if, as we look at our local FIs is have financial institutions having the ability to, if Chase goes and buys or I ACH money out to Coinbase to buy Bitcoin, to have an email that I get that then says, hey, remember we have a vault here, a secure place to store assets and that'll be all automatic as well. Yeah. Um, is any other credit union or bank doing this? Not that I know of, no. Uh, hopefully they will be, right? When we launch ours, the, the thought will be to um, uh, offer the solution out to other banks and credit unions. We feel that given the um, security, given the simplistic nature of it, uh, my hope would be is that this CU Digital Asset Vault is in every credit union in the next three years. So this is, this is a, a business opportunity yes, it will for be. your company? Yes. Yep. I'll think about the first friend you tried to educate on the space who had nothing, knew mm-hmm. nothing. Well, we have 80 some staff, 81 staff, who most of them don't own digital assets, haven't been involved. And so the last 18 months has been walking our staff through like, what is a wallet? What is a Bitcoin? And mm-hmm. and then reminding them that, hey, you don't need to know what yield farming is. You don't need, just like you don't know uh, all the ins and outs of you know every sort of uh, investment our members make today, right? But what we do know is how to access our safety deposit box. What we do know is how to do a transaction on our core. And so we've been trying to educate our staff just enough so that they understand, but then really focusing on the system piece, the service piece, what do I do if I'm locked out of my vault and understanding that side of it, just like we do uh, with any other product. And then we actually created a, um, a series, a educational series for our 25,000 members called um, In the Know, the digitization, or I'm sorry, Web3 and the digitization of money. 
Um, and so we have a flip book uh, that will actually, um, we've done some engagement of our members, but we'll actually start here in Q1, walking them down the path of a 12 step education that just gives them a, what is blockchain? What is Bitcoin and Ethereum? Mm -hmm. What are wallets? And start to educate our members. We've done a lot locally in the community as well. Is it up on your website? Not yet, okay. no. Um, the other thing I think of is, um, and I, it's the other, um, the other, uh, yes. So if we think about, so the digital asset vault, right? That is our product and that is our main reason we built it. But the other thing we're doing is we're actually from a credit union standpoint and a business infrastructure standpoint, we're really just getting our core ready for the streaming of finance, the streaming of money, right? Because, uh, whether it's a, I hope it's not a CBDC as it's presented. Frankly, that's my personal opinion. But uh, whether we like it or not, the dollar in our lifetime is going to become streaming. It's going digital. Um, and so I, the other thing we're doing as part of this process is we're really getting our core uh, from a system standpoint as well as an operation standpoint to be ready when mm. finance is streaming mm. and, and money is streaming. And if you look at, so today as a, as a credit union or a bank, we're obviously a credit union, but as a financial institution, you have Visa and MasterCard, and then you have a, a switch basically in the center that connects your bank or your credit union to Visa and MasterCard networks. Then you have a connector between the SWIFT network that moves ACH and wires in, in, you know, in and out of the mm -hmm. United States. Well. Uh, our code engine or our vault is essentially doing the same thing that the switches do today for the Visa, the MasterCard and Swift networks. And it's plugging our core into the DLT network. And today it's it's for uh, moving Bitcoin into the core for members. But but you could you could say in the future it's digital titles on the blockchain. It's uh, smart contracts being moved into the vault. Yeah, it's so, you're, so you're laying tracks for crucial, perhaps indispensable uh, digital infrastructure. You got it. Yep. We're just getting our core function or core operation ready mm -hmm. for uh, being plugged into the DLT network. And think about the security, right? On, on top of it, back to our kind of beginning conversation is the nodes or the security with the Bitcoin network or the Ethereum network, you know, uh, personal beliefs aside, just blockchain network in general, DLT networks. So we're plugging into that to be able to pull things into our member vault or into our uh, core banking platform, whatever that asset or contract or item is, but then the distributed security as well that comes along with that, um, that's where I get excited. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is really phase one to probably a 20 step ongoing evolution, no different than it's been with yeah. online banking, bill mm -hmm. pay, debit card, check card, this is just the next iteration for financials. And I think most, back to your question before, I think most uh, executives of financial institutions wanna stick their head in the sand a little and think that this isn't coming uh, because they don't care for or understand Bitcoin. But we all in this room know uh, blockchain, digital assets, DLT networks is much, much more than just Bitcoin. Um, so are you getting phone calls? Yes. From other institutions? Phone calls. We heard about what LinkedIn you're doing. LinkedIn messages, um, emails to my personal email account, my work email account, text messages. Uh, the last 60 days, it's there's been a lot of uh, mm. chatter, which because is Because of the ETF approval. Yes. And um, like, how, how do you handle that wave? I probably could do a little bit better of a job. Um, I mean, if someone asks you for a meeting, are you like, let's go? Yeah, yeah usually absolutely. You're, pretty, you're open to it. Yeah. yeah, I think that's one thing that's really different in the credit union space in general than banking. You know, banking, if the bank up the street called you when I was a banker, it's like, I'm not coming to meet with you. You're a competitor. I'm going to eat your lunch, right? Credit union space, it's like, how can we collaborate? How mm -hmm. can we collaborate for the community, for the individuals we're serving? And so that mentality for me spills over into everything. So if the guy from the bank or gal from the bank calls me, it's like, let's talk. Because um, at the end of the day, the the more that our um, 
um, banks, credit unions, industries, companies are educated on this for our community, the better. Will the St. Cloud Financial Credit Union um, create some sort of consultancy in-house then to start working with other organizations, make it formal? Yeah. Like, that, yes. That'll come in 2024, okay. I would imagine. Yeah, It is we, 2024. This year? Later this yeah, year, yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, we have some other things that are up our sleeve as well that I can't share yet, but this will be an exciting year for our credit union and for the industry for sure. Come on. I can't. No. <laughs> soon. In very, very soon. Uh, in the next couple months, I'll have some more exciting news to share. You're the one steering this? Helping. Yeah, it's it's our organization, I would say. Are but, you getting a, a team under you then? Of Yes. Of, like, are you hiring? Uh, we will be, yeah. Um, what will you be hiring for? So this is important because uh, there are graduates from the universities around here and, and some I've, if I don't know them, then I've, I've secondhand I hear about them saying, oh, we're going to Silicon Valley, we're going to yeah. Austin, you know, we're going to New York. So like what kind of... I would say a uh, motivated analyst and or programmer um, mm -hmm. for sure as we look at the next 12 to 15 months. Mm. Um, we, you know, obviously we're partnered with the land uh, and they've been a huge resource for us as mm -hmm. well and will continue to be. Um, but I, I think the, the you know, it, and this is maybe a little bit of a unicorn, but the perfect person would be somebody who, even if they just worked as a teller uh, going to college, for programming, right? Somebody that has mm -hmm. some financial uh, institution experience, but that understands core programming, blockchain building, um, that would be invaluable, I think, to our organization. Um, and I, sales, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Sales for sure. Yeah. And do you have in-house marketing who are, are going to you know, we do. Yeah. So we actually see you uh, digital asset vault and yep. We and, created a, a, Oh, I should have, we created our, um, so we obviously have our logo, our, our credit union logo, but we actually created a CU digital asset vault logo as well mm -hmm. that, uh, will be on obviously marketing material. But if you say you, you're in person and you get a printout of your digital asset vault history, it's going to have the digital asset vault logo, uh, we hired, uh, contracted a street, a chief strategy officer who is helping with, um, our CXO, Megan, build out a communication launch plan, et cetera. And then we just brought on two new, uh, marketing individuals that will help as well. The fun part of this, or one fun aspect, I think of, of this new world internet era, I like to look at it as, yeah, is that it, it like you've got these institutions on these hills, right? Whether it's the media institutions, the financial institutions. And then, but, but what happens underneath is like these tunnels, like under, to use the, to, to continue the analogy and they, they miss it. They do. Like, um, and then they catch on. And then they're like a, a large media institution, a, a TV news channel and be like, oh, hey, one of the local kids from the high school has a really popular TikTok channel and yeah. another story on that. <laughs> but has any of the, the institutional press and financial uh, world locally or nationally found you and, and, and what you're doing, or is it all still pretty underneath no, their, the eyes of no, above? I would, I would say it's, um, I think we'll see more of it as we start to move forward over the next three to six months. Mm -hmm. uh, but for example, um, vice chairman of the NCUA uh, sent me an invite to be part of a panel um, at cool. GAC next week. I'm uh, having coffee at the Capitol with Tom Emmer uh, next Tuesday when I'm in DC to talk about blockchains and digital oh, assets. Wow. Uh, I'm on a Service Star podcast tomorrow, which is a credit union uh, industry leading podcast. Okay. Um, so I would say it's it's started uh, to pick up. Um, we'll see more of it, I think, with the narrative shift for sure. And what are you doing in DC next week? Uh, so it's the gover annual government affairs conference for the credit union industry, okay. GAC it's uh -huh. called. And so I got invited to speak, I think it's on Monday or Tuesday. So I'll be out there uh, as part of a, a digital asset round table and then panel. And then obviously meeting with others while we're out there. But it's just an annual credit union industry conference, government affairs conference. Hmm. So. And so from that angle, it's, uh, the, I, 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 will the conversation, will you be discussing how it, 
works with existing regulations. Yeah, probably. Yep. I think a little bit too. We'll be sharing from our lens, sharing our story a little bit in working with regulators over the last year and a half. Uh, we sent a nine, eight and a half or nine page letter to the formal letter to the NCUA that I'm a little biased, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's on display someday, uh, just for our credit union industry. Mm-hmm. I, I Again, I'm biased, but um, that was in Q4 of 2020, I'm sorry, Q1 of 2023. 2022. I don't know. It's sometime in the last year and a half. Um, and we've seen some press, but I again, I think we've been part of so many things and we've had, um, you know, you're on a podcast or a, a, an event with, say, 50 people. Before, you'd get one or two people that follow up. Mm-hmm. Now I'm getting emails before the podcast is even over, and it, it's going from, you know, the the executive or VP at the financial institution that just wants to talk about what crypto they should invest in and what's hot to the mm-hmm. CEO or the chairman of the board saying, hey, can you come in and meet with us next week and talk about your strategy? Uh, and we're seeing a lot more of that. Um, I was also a runner-up for the luminaries. Uh, Credit Union Luminary Award uh, last year, uh, and part of it was centered around our work or or my work with the credit union and Mm -hmm. our strategy. Who won it? Uh, A gal who was doing, um, I would say, a lot more uh, meaningful work for humanity. Uh Um, Others would say I'm wrong there, but uh, she was a a great uh, candidate as well, and she deserved it. That's a national award? Yes. Okay. Yep. Wow. It was fun to be there. Are you are you online? You said LinkedIn. Yeah. Are you on the other socials much or not really? I uh, LinkedIn and Facebook are would be the main okay. avenues for me. I'm on Twitter, but I don't think I've ever tweeted. Is that the right way? Yeah, tweeted. I don't think well, I've not ever anymore. tweeted. Oh, it's so X you're now. so far behind. You're yeah, like, sorry, it's X. Got updated twice. Yeah. <laughs> what are these tweets? Yeah. Sorry, not anymore. No, I use it for for me or you know for news, following different yeah. people, but yeah. Right here in Minnesota, building the building the bridges. Yeah, it's fun. Thank you for having me. Oh yeah, and tonight you'll be giving this the you know, truncated version of this along with those charts. I, I'm I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah. Um, I got to wrap up a few things, but I have a, a very fancy PowerPoint, and I'm excited for tonight. I was very time. impressed with the turnout. You know, um, I don't know. Did you guys spread the word? Get a few people to come. I did my job. Good. Yeah, we'll Good. see. Good. Yeah, yeah I, this is our best. Um, these meetups, you know, the space holds about 40 people. I mean, okay. we can squeeze in 10 more and we, yeah. we might have to tonight. Yeah. Um, but I was just, I was impressed. You know, we had a nice wave of RSVPs right away, which is usual. But then it just kept trickling in and trickling in and trick- I'm like, this is not stopping. And uh, That's cool. You know, so for our monthly meetups to get this many is is, is pretty cool. I'm excited. Um, yeah, well, They're we coming too. to see Megan, so it's, it has nothing to do with me. Uh, and Frankie's Pizza doesn't hurt. Yeah, I've never eaten there. It's the is deep it good? dish Chicago. Ooh. Yeah, or or he'll, he'll make thin crust, of course, too. But he'll have all kinds of pizzas out there. I'm, I'm excited. Do they serve beer? Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Encourage that. The I'm pizza's even more free. excited. Um, so he loves <laughs> it when people have a beer or two to pay him some uh, patronage. Yep. Yeah. Give him a little. Give him a little love for that. Awesome. Yeah. Very excited. Um, anything else that you'd like to? I don't know. I, I think we covered. Yeah, the, the only other thing I'd say, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, definitely appreciate it uh, on behalf mm-hmm. of the credit union as well as the uh, MN Crypto Council. Uh, we've enjoyed the partnership and yeah. just starting to um, see how we can work together. Uh, the other thing I'd say is um, for those listening that are in the financial industry, um, sticking your head in the sand uh, in hoping that it's a fad and is going to go away will be the Achilles heel of our industry if people don't start to get involved. Mm. So with that. You know, this might be a whole other can of worms, but a lot of times I, I think um, when something truly revolutionary is put before us, um, and, and this, is, this has happened now with... Um, with the internet, yeah, right. Whether it's with cryptocurrency or whether it's with social media, and uh, I think there's a temptation to think it's going to be its own 
like the people who believe in it think it's going to just completely displace the old. Yeah. And the old timers think it's just going to bounce off of us like the Liberty dollar. Yeah. You know, that gold. Yep. They tried to make actual physical money and then they got all in trouble. Yep. Um, but I think how this works is it's always integration. And so um, th- that's exactly what you're doing. And, and it sounds like that's what you're trying to tell the other financial institutions. Like They need to get tapped into the future of money. And I think anybody, I, I can I can understand exactly your point, right? 100, 110% is, is the people that believe in something typically think it's going to go, it's going to overshoot what it actually does typically. And they think it's going to happen in two years when it happens in five to seven, yeah. right? And the other people think it's going to be beanie babies, right? And, and yeah. typically... We end up being somewhere in between. Uh, I think it just depends on the impact on humanity or on our society. But the fascinating thing to me is I can understand the, the, the old timers or the people that have been on their spot where they are uh, up until the last six months, in my mind. Mm-hmm. And if you don't think uh, when BlackRock, and it's been the most successful ETF in the history of our yeah. country, yeah. you have Swift, who moves every wire and ACH dollar today, signed a partnership with Chainlink mm-hmm. if, uh, six months ago. You have Visa and MasterCard. Visa started beta testing the Ethereum network in May of 2022. Uh, MasterCard late in 2022. They now both have sections on their website with master or with digital asset or crypto Mm -hmm. and blockchain. Mm -hmm. You have Blackhawk Payment uh, Network, which is the second, I think, second largest payment processor, uh, tapped into the Lightning Network with uh, with Jack Mullers and some of that. Like the writing is on the wall. Yeah. uh, And I just don't understand how, I I think it's anybody's prediction on, on how how far, how fast. But yeah. if you're still on the sidelines thinking it's just going to be a little sliver, yeah. um, I think you need to uh, maybe go see a doctor. Mm. So. Can you suggest one? <laughs> no. No. Good luck. You're on your own. You're on your own. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Yeah. Awesome. All right.